Hey, everybody, and welcome to the first of many HackerCasts. Uh, my name is Ryan O'Leary. I'm the Chief Security Research Officer here at White Hat Security. I'm also joined by my uh, fellow partner in crime here. Uh, it's Rob Tate, who is the uh, Distinguished Security Researcher here at White Hat. Um, together, we form the Security Research Institute, um, and our main mission is to bring you really everything about security. Um, and this HackerCast is going to be really focused on a deep dive on one particular topic. And what we want to do is bring you analysis, techniques, and the implica implications of uh, vulnerabilities, trends, news, just things that we think is interesting. So every week, hopefully, you'll get uh, some value out of this. We'll go deep dive into a topic, and uh, it'll be a really fun conversation to have. Um, you know, first and foremost, what we want to do is Rob was able to research a really cool vulnerability. Um, every week, we always get something from customers or from the industry where they go, "Is this a real vulnerability? Is this an issue I need to take? I need to look at or not?" And Rob actually looked at one of those vulnerabilities. Uh, we're calling it the href with href with targets uh, vulnerability. So Rob's going to talk today about what that is, what he found, and what are the impl implications of that. So take it away, Rob. Sure. Hi. So uh, like Ryan said, you know, uh, we try to look a little bit deeper into these things. We get a lot of our customers, right? We have hundreds and hundreds of customers who have these issues. They're hearing about, uh, they're reading something online, someone saying, this is a huge deal. Uh, someone else saying, no, it's not a big deal at all. You shouldn't care about it. So we have to try to look into it to figure out, uh, you know, whether it's something you should really care about or not. Um, and this is one of those instances where you're going to hear something you don't hear security people say all the time, but uh, this one's really not that big of a deal, guys. Um, this is definitely, I wouldn't make this one your top priority of something to fix, um, but it is interesting how it actually works uh, and why it works. Um, and just a little bit behind the scenes about what the browsers are doing. Um, so I think I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen a little bit on something I just, uh, I just, you know, really quickly knocked together to sort of demonstrate how this works. Um, so I'll see if I can successfully share my screen. You got right. it. Uh, so. So uh, you know the way this the way this works is what we're what we're uh, concerned about here is the fact that if you open uh, a a link uh, using a uh, a target uh, for for your href tag that is something specific, right? So if you say target is blank, is usually what people are talking about. Uh, if you if you find articles about this, we'll link a few below, and also uh, I wrote a quick blog post about this that has some references in it. Uh, people are are saying this is an issue with target equals blank, uh, but it's not really target equals blank. That's the problem. It's just any any target basically, which forces the link to open up in a new tab. Uh, when the target opens up in the new tab, the new tab actually has some control over the original tab, which causes uh, you know people to kind of freak out, right? That's a that's a really scary thing. So uh, you know I can kind of demonstrate what we're what we're looking at here. The 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 problem. So this this is just a I, I just. Very simple HTML page that just lets me lets me do these quickly. Uh, so if you don't have a mitigation, let's start with the base case. You say target equals blank. If you click this, this new tab uh, has the ability to see the actual HTML from the original page um, and is able to change the location. So when I click that button, you know this this original location changes. Uh, so the concern here is that, uh, for example, if this was on a bank's website and they allowed you to uh, open links to other websites, say in your profile or something, that someone would then put a, uh, instead of you've been hacked, what you'd see is a copy of your bank's website telling you that your session has expired, please re-enter your credentials. Someone wouldn't notice that the URL has changed and they might type in their username and password all over again, but really you're on a, a spoof page. So it's basically just another way of delivering a spoofed page uh, by you're going to some other page say this is like a, you know their profile page or something and in the background javascript is is forcing the original page to change location so that's that's the big concern uh, but this page actually has access to a bunch of other stuff but most of this it only really has access to uh, because it's on the same domain so if you can see here i think the uh, the google logo may be a little in the way um, but this is on a, another local host uh, and this one's on uh, on local host if we change the, this was our, the original page was on another local host. That's why this one is also seeing on another local host. I just uh, set up my my local um, configuration to forward these to the same thing as local host. 
But if I if I actually start from localhost instead of another localhost and start over, right? So if I'm on localhost, um, make it big so you guys can see it, uh, and then I and then I you know set my target to another localhost uh, for the host name of the link. Uh, I don't have any mitigation. Uh, then, then what you'll see is there's really nothing else here. You can't really do anything with it, um, but you can still change the opener of the location. You can still you can still change uh, the the actual location of the the file that opened it. This uh, this page is referred to as the opener. So this this window over here is the opener. I can show you a little bit what's happening uh, under the hood here. Uh, so basically, the the DOM has. I don't know if I'll be able to make this text bigger. I am. So there, there's a an actual object here that you have access to called the window dot opener uh, that the the new DOM has access to, and it can, um, you know, you can do some specific things with it. But you'll see, notice that this is relatively small. There's not a lot of stuff here. Most of this is just references. Um, you you can see that there's a location here. But the location is really just allowing you to assign or replace the location. It's basically this specific thing is what the browser allows you to do. So I tested across different uh, some different browsers using this little this little page I not, I knocked together, um, and basically what I found was that Chrome, Firefox, uh, Safari uh, work kind of similarly, where there's nothing really too interesting you can do besides the spoofing attack, um, and then Internet Explorer worked a little differently where um, you know, basically you're locked down even further. So it's really the only, the only difference in Internet Explorer is whether or not you're on the same host. If you're on the same host, you can do anything. Uh, just like the other three browsers, if you're not on the same host, you really can't do anything. Um, so, that, so that, you know, leads us to the conclusion of, you know, what, what really is important about this vulnerability. So in, in my mind, there's really not that much about this vulnerability to be concerned about. Um, so if you can spoof a site by, uh, if you can make an entirely fake spoof site uh, of your bank with the fake set of places to put in credentials and, and get customers to put their credentials in there, you don't really need this method to get that spoof site out, in my opinion. Uh, this is just another way of delivering that same spoof site. It's, is it more effective? Uh, probably. It's probably more effective than just having the link go off-site to something that looks like your bank. Um, but uh, in my mind, it's not really that much more effective than just that. So if you have somewhere in your application where someone can uh, put in any arbitrary link to any arbitrary page, um, you already have a situation where they could be sending that link could just go immediately to a site that looks exactly like your website and asks for credentials. So I think it's basically not that much worse than if this if browsers didn't work this way. So browsers do work this way. Um, it's a reality, and you can mitigate against it by changing the uh, the rel tag. Um, I guess I can demonstrate that real quick. While I'm doing that, Ryan, if you have any questions, feel free. Yeah, so it sounds like it sounds like if you have this vulnerability, you have bigger problems anyway, um, because you're kind of linking to um, these things that you really don't have control over too much, and you could potentially have other issues as well. That are far worse than this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're, it's a risk you should know about, right? If you allow people to, from your site, link to anything that they want to, link to a page that they control, uh, you know, that's that's something you should be considering. If you want to allow people to do that, to, you know, sometimes it's unavoidable, right? If you're Facebook, you want people to be able to link to others, other content. You want Facebook to be the hub that they go to to find these links, right? Um, and that's already a, a risk you run by doing that, is that they could be linking to uh, a page that says, in order to follow this link, you have to type in your Facebook credentials here. And some number of people are going to fall for that. Um, and the other thing that I've seen people say on this particular one, I've been reading a couple a couple posts and things, and, and people are, are scared about it because they think it's kind of the new cross-site scripting. You know, it's a new vector of cross-site scripting. But it sounds like it doesn't have anything to do really with cross-site scripting at all. Um, it's, it's a much different issue and cross-site scripting is by far probably easier to pull off and much more dangerous than this is. 
Yeah, yeah, I would say cross-site scripting. I mean, it's cross-site scripting still everywhere. I mean, you know, we see it all the time in our customers, and those are the people who are hiring us to assess their websites for vulnerabilities. So even among security-conscious people, cross-site scripting is still all over the place. And cross-site scripting is just a way easier thing to exploit than what this is. Um, so yeah, I, I would I would definitely say pay much more attention to detecting and, and fixing your cross-site scripting vulnerabilities than anything like this. Um, this I would say is more kind of in the informational realm. Like if this is something that you might want to know about, if you have a site that you really care really heavily about the security on, you think you fixed every issue that you can think of for the site. This is something you might want to consider going in and, and as a policy using uh, a mitigation like this no opener one I'm going to show you. Um, so the way this one works is basically you just say no opener. What that what that does is when you open a new tab, this new tab no longer has access to the opener object. So if I actually typed it correctly, then this would not work. Yeah, so this button doesn't work. Um, so that that uh, that opener object that I showed you before in the in the DOM uh, doesn't exist anymore for this this tab. This this new tab doesn't get access to the opener object, so it can't make calls back into the original to the original page. It's relatively simple. Um, I can I can just show in source real quick what that what that looks like. What's going on here? Oh, it's just tiny. Um, yeah, so you just say rel equals no opener, and that, that basically says, you know, whatever the whatever tab this opens up in the browser, it instructs the browser not to give it a link back to the original one. So it uh, sounds like the the advice for this one would be, yes, it is technically an issue. It is not a very high priority issue. Um, this is one that you should put at the bottom of the stack, basically. Fix your cross scripting, fix your SQL injections, fix your authentication issues, fix your URL redirect issues, this is something to get to when you have the chance to, when everything else is fixed. But it is not a high priority issue. It is not the next cross-site scripting. It's not the next SQL injection. Uh, it's something that's there, but uh, is not a very high priority and not a very high likelihood of being exploited. Yep. Yeah. Completely agree. Yeah. It's I, I, uh, even going back and fixing it can be a real pain. Uh, you have, may have a lot of links. So at going back and adding this uh, rel equals no opener to everything be a real pain in the butt. Uh, it's not a bad policy to have. I mean, if I was a developer somewhere and someone said it's our policy to always use this on on any link um, to prevent this from happening, you know, that's a good policy to have. Um, but I, yeah, you know, I I wouldn't stop. I wouldn't stop what I was doing and go back and fix thousands of these links to have this on it. I just I just don't I don't think it increases your risk that much. So another piece of advice for everybody, you know, when you're when you're browsing the forums for uh, new issues and new vulnerability types that are coming out there, um, everybody likes to think that whatever they found is the most critical thing in the world. Um, so having having a little bit of deep dive into it um, and, and looking at what the actual severity is um, is really important because we can uh, we as an industry often run to the newest fire that there is, and oftentimes. That's not what we should be going to. I mean, we've seen it all the time at White Hat that you know, the old vulnerabilities are the ones that constantly get introduced and the ones that don't get fixed. Um, you know, Rob alluded to a little while ago, we see cross-site scripting all the time on applications that we assess. And cross-site scripting is, is old. It's an old vuln. It's been around for a long time. The fix is known. Um, it's not terribly hard to, to develop um, if you're doing it right. Um, but we still see it time and time again. So we, we just need to make sure people don't run to the newest and greatest things when there's a lot of things that are higher priority uh, that have been around a long time and much more likely to get exploited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, I, the way that we as an industry prioritize what we fix can sometimes get really skewed based on what's new, uh, what, has a, what has a fancy name to it, uh, you know, what's, what's making the kind of popular news uh, versus industry news, just you know what what is our CEO hearing about while he's on his plane between locations? Like you know that you know what is he 
you know, what are they aware of at the higher levels of the company that they're going to come ask you about? Those kinds of things start to become factors in, in what we prioritize fixing um, as opposed to, you know, a real risk-based approach of, you know, what are, what, are, what are my issues that I have that are causing me the most risk? And like you said, it's, it's usually the kind of unsexy stuff. It's, these, it's just these custom, uh, custom vulnerabilities in your application logic where you are allowing for SQL injection, cross-site scripting, that kind of stuff. It's just opening most applications up to a huge amount of risk. But I think that's one of our, kind of our main missions with this HackerCast is to, to filter out what's real, what's not real, what needs to be addressed, what doesn't need to be addressed. Um, you know, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of news cycles out there and vulnerability is a hot topic. We see breaches happen more and more um, and we see issues like this and then we see issues like the crack vulnerability in, in Wi-Fi. Uh, and you see those at the same time and you think, oh, they're, they're the same severity. But you know, crack is by far the worst issue, right? <laughs> that destroys Wi-Fi protocols altogether. Um, so that's one of the main missions we're going to do in this in this hacker cast is pick a topic that's interesting, that's relevant, that's new, really dive into it, have this, this discussion, research it, tell you what it is, what you need to pay attention to, and really what you could ignore. Um, so I, I really appreciate Rob uh, going deep dive into this and, and researching that. It was it was great. Yeah. Great. I look forward to having a bunch more of these. Yeah, awesome. Hopefully we'll have some that are really important. <laughs> yeah, hope, hope, hopefully we don't have ones that are really important. Let's let's hope we don't have serious issues, but we know there's going to be serious issues. So we're going to bring it to you uh, as quickly as we possibly can. So thanks a lot to Rob. Uh, Rob's going to be with me every week doing these. Um, we're hoping to have some special guests in at some point too um, from kind of around the industry and, and inside the company. So it should be pretty exciting. So stay tuned. Um, if you enjoyed this video, we would really appreciate a like. Um, if you really enjoyed this video, you can subscribe. Uh, we're really excited to, to, to bring this all to you. If you have any um, comments, any questions, be sure to put them in the comments below. Um, also, if you have any topics for future HackerCast, if there's anything you'd like us to talk about, please put them in the comments as well. Um, appreciate everybody tuning in for the first edition of HackerCast and uh, keep your safe, safe out there. Thanks everybody for watching. Bye.